वर्णिवे शरमणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराजनाबुज पूजित सुरनरोतमुदा धर्मनंदन महम विचित धर्मनंदन महम विचित श्री घनश्याम महाराज नी जय और माइटी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड और बी लॉर्ड घनश्याम महाराज पाथ में कठो लिब्रेशन पूज्य पाथ गुरु जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू इज जय स्वामी नारायण वी आर डिस्कसिंग द स्टोरीज नरेटेड बाय भगवान स्वामी नारायण हिमसेल्फ इन लोया वाइल भगवान वॉज डिस्कसिंग इन द असेंबली ऑफ द ड्यूटीज एंड संतो in loya and and that was all the discourses written in the scriptures and that is the vachanamrut third of loya chapter in that vachanamrut bhagwan swami narayan himself when to sant bhagodanand swami and shivanand swami they ask a question to bhagwan regarding one's faith in the form of bhagwan as well as in the form of sant the character the characteristics of a person who has such kind of faith then in the answer bhagwan swami himself says that such a person who has faith in the form of bhagwan and sant coupled with the knowledge of their great, glorious greatness he can do everything for bhagwan and sant then bhagwan countered many many points like regarding he um uh, he renounces his home his family his wealth his property even he don't cares about uh about the public ridicule or he renounce kingdom he renounce pleasure renounce wealth renounce his wife and in the case of a woman she renounce her husband in this way for the sake of bhagwan and sant the person who has such kind of unflinching faith he can do everything for bhagwan and sant and then after describing this definition of nischay or faith bhagwan swami narayan himself narrated the glories or we can say its stories of his own devotees then we have discuss about rajput garuji of the village dadusar then after kusal kur by of dharampur now today bhagwan swami narayan himself narrated the story of parvat bai parvat bai was a devotee not from beginning he was a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan but he originally from the time of ramanand swami who was the guru of bhagwan swami narayan himself so parvat bai was a disciple of ramanand swami and he was even the householder still he live like he he was living such a life that he was not living in a society he was just living according to his guru's words he was living in society he was living with his family like he only obeying bhagwan's words bhagwan's agnya otherwise his mind his thought always engage into the divine incident of bhagwan and even more than that he always remain eager to when bhagwan or my guru give me command to renounce all this family this relation this wealth this property then i immediately follow that command in this way parvat bai he he was living in the village of agatrai near junagadh and as he was at the time of raman and swami so from the beginning in the satsang he firmly believe his guru raman and swami as the form of bhagwan himself he did not believe that this is my guru or this is any sant but he firmly believed that 
this is bhagwan himself and in this way he serves raman and swami after many years passing in serving this way to his guru raman and swami after raman and swami's disappearance from this world according to raman and swami's command bhagwan swami and sir on a gadi meaning bhagwan swami and become the head of the sampraday and that is all of the followers of raman and swami to obey raman and swami's command they all also become the disciple and followers of bhagwan swami narayan so purudva also become a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan after raman and swami's disappearance once purudva was as he was a farmer he was a landlord and once he was doing some work he was plowing his farm along with many of his workers so once upon a time he was doing mansi puja as that was a time of 3 or uh, 3:30 or 4 o'clock afternoon so he was doing mansi puja but as he had no particular time to set down for mansi puja and that is why while doing work while plowing the farm he was doing mansi puja so in the mansi puja he offer yogurt and millet bread to bhagwan meaning rotlo and dahi to bhagwan but how was his level of devotion how was his spiritual highness he had attained after serving raman and swami as bhagwan as he was doing mansi puja and he offering bhagwan to this third the another worker or one of maybe his friend he understood parod by after doing so much work he became tired and even while plowing the farm he was sleeping so by touching parod by he was trying to wake up him and at the same time as parod by's eyes opened but with the amazement of all the workers all the other people who had gathered uh, who who were present at that field they all become surprised because when parod bhai opened his eyes and at the same time as he was offering thar to bhagwan and thar uh, remaining thar in his hand so as he opened his eyes so at the same time this millet bread and yogurt both fell down from his hand and all the people they can physically see that on the earth in the field that there was a bowl of a yogurt and a millet bread so all become surprised when they asked prabhu bhai what is this thing how is it possible that physically nothing in your hands nothing with uh, n- n- nothing but this plow and you're plowing the farm and we understood you are sleeping because of tiredness so we try to wake up then what this happen we don't understand anything else then parod bhai narrated that i am offering devotion to my bhagwan i am doing mansi puja i am offering this thar i i am not physically offering thar to bhagwan but i am offering thar to mentally to bhagwan and as you wake up wake me up then at the same time i am going there to serve bhagwan and this thar at the time was in my hand and because you wake me up and s- uh, that was sudden so it fell down and you can see here that thar so 
this incident shows that Prabhu by attain this much highness in spiritual world, or we can say the higher level of devotion towards Bhagwan, that as he worship Bhagwan as one worship Bhagwan physically, offering thar and everything. In the same way, Parudva also has the same amount of love towards Bhagwan. That whenever he offer anything to Bhagwan in a Mansi Puja, Bhagwan physically accepts all those things. That was the greatness of Parudva. Second time, the another incident also happened in the same time, in the same fashion. Once upon a time, he was working in his field, and at that time, Parudva as he was always remain engaged by his mind with the multiple thinking or multiple thoughts regarding Bhagwan Swaminarayan's greatness, and that is why once upon a time, while doing work in the field. He was thinking that how, as in the scriptures, as in the discourses, it is narrated that there were 24 avatars of Bhagwan. When Prahlad prayed to Bhagwan, Bhagwan gave him darshan in the form of Nrusi, meaning half a body of lion and half a body of a human being. How is it possible? If this is so, then how it look like? I want to see. I cannot guess how was that form of Bhagwan. Then, at the same time, as Parvatbhai was thinking regarding this form of Bhagwan, meaning regard, regarding the form of Nrsi Bhagwan, at the same time, divine light appeared in front of him in the sky. Only he can he, only he can see this divine light, and in the divine light. Divine form of Bhagwan Swaminarayan appear, and from this divine form, one by one, all twenty-four avatars, like Ram, Krishna, Nusi, Vara, all these twenty-four different different avatars, meaning different different form of Bhagwan, came out from this original form of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. And they all all came out after having darshan to this, uh, after giving darshan to Parvatbhai. All these twenty-four different forms of Bhagwan, they all merged back into the original form of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. As this divinity experience by Parvatbhai. Parvatbhai also got uh, original and true knowledge regarding Bhagwan Swaminarayan's. True greatness. Now, after this incident, after giving darshan to Parvat by Bhagwan Swaminarayan, he also disappeared. The divine light also disappeared. Now, this incident also gives us the knowledge regarding Bhagwan Swaminarayan's true greatness. That all the other avatars, they came. Out from the form of Bhagwan, as well as they also merged back into the Bhagwan Swaminarayan's divine form. So there is no any single other avatar, no any other god, who can give darshan in the form of others. But only Bhagwan Swaminarayan is such a great because he is the supreme lord, and that is why he can do this thing. But many times, even we also thinking regarding these different different forms of Bhagwan. But we cannot have this kind of divine vision. We cannot see such kind of divine darshan of Bhagwan's different form. Why? Because we have not attained this spirituality in our life. We have not attained this much devotion towards Bhagwan. That whatever we think, Bhagwan immediately give us that thing. But Parvatbhai has attained this devotion not by worshiping, not by worshiping Bhagwan Swaminarayan, but he had attained these spiritual qualities 
these spiritual powers after a, after serving his guru ramanand swami as the form of bhagwan so whoever want to get progress in spiritual world whoever want to attain something like god realization or self realization or the pure devotion towards bhagwan whatever one can desire to attain in this religion then he has to accept this path this path shown by parvat bhai to us through his life that if you worship your guru understanding or believing him as the manifest form of god then you can also attain the same kind of devotion towards bhagwan and that is why bhagwan swami also narrated the same glory in the vachanamrita also for the satpurush that whoever believe once guru as the manifest form of bhagwan himself then he can attain all kinds of attainment whatever he desire if he desire to see even the other realms he can see immediately or if he can if he want to see the divine abodes of bhagwan then he also immediately enjoy the divine bliss of bhagwan's divine abode while living this is the real magic or we can say this is the secret this is the open secret behind the great success in this spiritual path in the bhagwan swami narayan's divine fellowship many such kind of incident happen in parvat bhai's life but behind these powers or behind this divinity he had experienced there is only one reason his faith his nishche now after ramanand swami he had also the same kind of faith in the form of bhagwan swami narayan so once upon a time bhagwan swami narayan sent a letter to parvat bhai that uh, after uh, after reading this letter please uh, give up everything please uh, immediately leave your village and come to gadda the messenger reached there in agatrai and parvat at that at the time parvat bhai's only son he was very ill he was seriously ill that he might leave his body that was the con- condition but still as parvat bhai got the message that immediately leave for darshan of maharaj immediately without thinking for anything else even without saying a single word to his family or his son he immediately left his village agatra and immediately uh, started to walk towards the gadda after two or three hours as he reached only not too far his one of attendant from his home from his village he came and he made in the way and he gave the message that your son he died parvat bhai said it's okay that's good news for me because my bhagwan swami narayan he had given me words that whoever my devotees live body at the same time i definitely come to take him into my divine abode akshardham so as he is enjoying devotion of bhagwan swami narayan here on this earth in the same way he is now enjoy the divine bliss and divine devotion even better than here in the divine abode of akshardham but anyway i'll i'll take bath in the way whenever i got a chance or whenever i encounter any pond or river in the way i'll took a bath don't worry about it you all together the other relatives and other family members all together 
you complete the final rites, funeral and everything. I am going to meet my Bhagwan in Garuda. So, even though he was living in his family, he has not a single or drop of attachment with his family. This is what Parvat Bhai's greatness, that he has this kind of attachment or we can say faith in the form of Bhagwan Swaminarayan also. As Bhagwan Swaminarayan mentioned here in the Vachanamrut, third of Loya, that one who has faith in the form of Bhagwan or in the form of Sant, then whenever time comes, or whenever he got commands, he can renounce his family, he can renounce his relations. In this way, Parvati also renounced his family and his relation, his relation for his own son. After this incident, when Parvati reached there to Garuda and Bhagwan Swami asked him about his son's death, then Parvati said, Maharaj, in this world, thousands of people get birth and they definitely die. Who cares about all those people? In the same way, my son, one of them, who died. But as you gave me command to come here, I am here to only obey your command. It is more important for me to please you than the other relatives. This is Parvodhva's understanding. The another incident happened that once upon a time, as this much greatness Parvodhva has, so many times Bhagavan Swaminarayan narrated Parvodhva's greatness towards the other devotees. So once the other devotees, the Kathis, they asked Maharaj, Maharaj, many times you narrated the glories and greatness of Parvodhbhai, that Parvodhbhai is such a devotee, Parvodhbhai has a such a greatness, he has such kind of understanding, but how we can believe? We also want to check Parvodhbhai's devotion towards you. Then Maharaj said, it's okay, don't worry about it. Whenever we go to go towards Junagad, we'll definitely go to the Agatrai and meet Parvatbhai. Then the devotee is satisfied. Now, once upon a time, Bhagavan Swaminar, along with all of those Kathis, meaning all of those devotees near Junagad, then the devotees, they requested Maharaj, Maharaj, you many times said about Parvatbhai. So if we have time, then let's go to Agatrai to meet Parvatbhai. Then Bhagwan Swamiran said, it's okay, let's go there. Then Maharaj along with many santos and devotees, they reach their, reach their Agatrai. There, when Bhagwan and santo and devotees, they reach to the house of Parvatbhai, then Parvatbhai also welcoming Maharaj and santo and devotees, after that, as he offered a nice seat to Bhagwan and the Santo and devotees, he sat down near Bhagwan's divine holy feet. Without asking anything, even for water or food, nothing, or for accommodation, nothing. He just, then the, those devotees who came with Maharaj, they asked Maharaj, Maharaj, as you say that Parudbhai was such a devotee, Parudbhai is such a devotee, then why he is not asking about single thing like did you thirsty or did you have, did you like to eat something or if you are horse, they will definitely become hungry or for our accommodation. Then Maharaj also asked Parudbhai, Parudbhai, these all devotees, they wanted such kind of facilities. Please, arrange something 
Why are you sitting here? Why are you not doing anything else? Then Parvat Bhai said, Maharaj, I am your worker. This house, this property, this wealth, everything not possessed by me. I am only worker. I am only manager. I only do the one thing. Only that is what you say to me that I do. Otherwise, you are the owner. And whenever owner come into his own house, then worker, the worker, he does not have any kind of tension or any kind of worries. Whatever the owner says, he has to do that. Give me commands. I'll do whatever you wish. Then Bhagwan say, oh, it's okay. So all these uh, devotees for some food or water for, the, for their horses and also some food or water for themselves. Then Kati says, no Maharaj, we do not want to eat or drink, but our horses were thirsty and they also like some fodder. Then the Parodbhai said, it's okay Maharaj. Then Parodbhai showed them his open field. There were uh, fresh crop in the farm. Still, he saw the darbars, his farm. Then all those darbars, they uh, they reached there in the farm with their horses, and they started to give freedom to their horses to eat. Then Maharaj called all of those devotees, and Bhagwan gave them understanding that this is a devotee who has no any kind of attachment towards his wealth property. He understood this is all of Ma all belongs to Maharaj. Maharaj is the owner. I am the worker. And as he shown you the field, so you are spoiling my devotee's property. This is not the way. You have to behave with the devotees. You have to be remain in such a way that the other devotee never has any kind of problem from you. So in this way, Bhagavan Swami Narayan shows the greatness of Parodbhai, that Parodbhai's understanding is beyond anyone's understanding because he firmly believed that even though I am remaining in the society, even though I am remaining in my family and house, this is all belongs to Bhagavan. And that is why Bhagavan Swaminan himself says in the Vachnamrut, 14th of Gada, first chapter, that whoever such a devotee, he believe his house, his family, his property, his wealth, everything belongs to Bhagwan, but not belongs to himself. He understands himself as a merely worker of Bhagwan. This is the understanding of a household devotee. And such a devotee is far greater than the devotee who has renounced the worldly things or who has renounced the world. So this is the greatness of Parvodbhai. And the last incident, once upon a time Parvodbhai was also along with Bhagwan, And at the time Bhagwan Swaminarayan give different different commands to Santo and at that time Santo has a niyam not to eat anything like sugar anything sweet like sugar or whatever uh, sweet or anything else and so Santo didn't eat anything which made from the sugar or even Santo didn't eat or drink uh, even sugar can juice so once uh, the devotees they have the feel of sugar can and so they invited santo and maharaj for this meal in india people used to eat directly this sugar can 
and after chewing after grasping its juice they throw out the remaining part so santo and uh, as maharaj and santo sanctified the devotee's farm after offering the sugar cane pieces to bhagwan even bhagwan swami also used some of pieces and after that he gave command to all to accept the prasad but as santo has a niyam so not a single son can touch this sugar cane but the other devotees they started but parvat bhai didn't touch he did not accept a single piece of prasad then maharaj himself asked to parvat bhai parvat bhai why are you not taking any single piece of prasad then he said maharaj i have niyam what you accept what you i offer to my bhagwan and what you they accept or what you they eat i can eat only those things then maharaj said i have eaten all this uh, this sugar can pieces and after that i gave this prasad to all of you then still parvat bhai said but Ma- bhagwan uh, but maharaj my bhagwan remain still he remain for eating this sugar can then bhagwan again said i have eaten then said no maharaj this all santo they were also your form so how your i can eat without offering them to eat this thing and as you gave niyam to all this santo they cannot eat any kind of sweet or even sugar can then how i can eat so at from the same time as you gave this command to santo i have also the niyam what your the niyam santo follow i also follow the same niyam so this is what the understanding of purod bhai that he believe all of the santo as the form of bhagwan this is what his faith in bhagwan and sant so that he renounce everything he even renounce that what will other think about me if i do not eat sugar or sweet then what will other thinks he never think in this way he don't care about what the other people said for me so this is the devotion of parvat bhai if we learn if we read or narrate or listen this kind of uh incident from the devotee's life then we can learn how they live how they live such a life in this satsang the satsang is the same all the niyams all the conditions all the rules and regulations they were also the same bhagwan is the same we as a devotee as devotee our vartman all this as remain the same but we are not attain same kind of devotion towards bhagwan as these devotees and santo they have why because our understanding is differ from the this previous devotees and that is why bhagwan himself narrated the stories of these devotees so that the other devotees also can understand the real path towards bhagwan from this devotee's life so now after understanding these stories of this devotees this past devotee's life we can at least try to imbibe those virtues in our life if we fully imbibe and imbibe these virtues and live according accordingly then bhagwan swami and definitely become pleased upon us and if he become pleased upon us then we will not desire anything else beyond his pleasure because we have attained the same bhagwan in the form of bhagwan as well as in the sant so now we do not have to 
attain anything else but we only want to attain his pleasure if we behave in this way then bhagwan become pleased upon us let we try to make bhagwan pleased upon us by imbibing these divine virtues from the parvat bai's life shri ganeshyam maharajani jay shri patim shri dharam sarvadeveshwaram bhakti dharmatmajam vasudevam har माधव केशव कामद कारण स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठम भजे श्रीघनश्याम महाराजनी जय